Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we explore the basics on a fairly unassuming herbivore who may have marked the beginning of one of the greatest dynasties in the history of dinosaurs. While many terrible lizards boasted exceptional defenses, lethal weaponry, and ornate ornamentations, some instead came across as more humble in appearance. But what this creature lacked in visual pizzazz, the story its bones told us about the history of dinosaurs was much more eye-catching. It's the flexible ornithopod, Camptosaurus. The earliest remains of Camptosaurus can be traced back to the Como Bluffs in Albany County, located in the U.S. state of Wyoming. Fossil collector William Harlow Reed would receive a partial skeleton of the creature in 1879 and provide it to Bone Wars paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh for analysis. That same year, Marsh would provide the name Camptonatus for the creature before eventually changing it to Camptosaurus in 1885, as the original name had already been taken by a cricket. Alongside this original genus name, Marsh would provide the species name Dispar, and as more and more specimens were recovered from the Como Bluffs and other parts of the American West, the number of species would only increase. By 1894, Medius and Nanus had joined the fold, and in 1909, paleontologist Charles Gilmore would add in another two, Brown Eye and Depressus. Seems like Gilmore was in a bit of a mood when he named that one. Despite reaching five species by the late 1910s, few of these names would actually stick around for a variety of reasons. Dispar would be fine, no changes there. Nanus, Medius, and Brown Eye, meanwhile, would all be redescribed as different growth stages of a single species, or possibly examples of sexual dimorphism between genders. Thus, all three would be invalidated, and specimens would be moved back under the Dispar species in 1980. As for Depressus, it was later determined to not be a Camptosaurus at all, and depending on the author, either belongs to the established genus Planicoxa, or establishes a new genus called the Osmocosaurus. Either way, not a Camptosaur. In one of these reports about Depressus, a new species would be established in 2008 for a new group of Camptosaurs found in Utah, called Aphanacetes. I've yet to mention, but specimens of Camptosaurus were not limited to North America. Across the pond in Europe, throughout the 19th and 20th century, various species of Camptosaurus were being identified, including, oh, for Pete's sakes, we don't have time for this, we're speeding through the rest. First, Aphanacetes is still accepted by some, but others believe it is actually a unique genus of advanced iguanodont called the Uteodon. As for all those European species, all would be disproved except for this one, Presswitchii, which is in a similar boat to Aphanocetes. Some still accept it as a true Camptosaurus, while others, as recent as 2011, have argued for it to represent another unique form of advanced iguanodontids, this time called the Comnoria. So, to summarize, depending on what sources you pull from, only the original species from all the way back in 1879 may actually be the only real species for this creature. Meaning the past, say, two or three minutes of this video may have been completely pointless. That's pretty par for the course if you follow this channel. For the sake of simplicity, the rest of this video will only focus on this original species, Camptosaurus dispar. Beginning with the genus name Camptosaurus, this name translates from Greek, including Camptos, meaning bent, and Soros, meaning lizard, having the name loosely translated to flexible lizard. In Marsh's original description, he mentioned how the curvature of the vertebral column may hint at Camptosaurus having a flexible spine, more so than most other dinosaurs he had observed. This flexibility would seemingly allow this creature to have excellent mobility and maneuverability, 
but later research has since disproved this belief, claiming Camptosaurus does not have a more flexible spine when compared to other family members or dinosaurs in general. But since the name had already been well established by this point, there was no reason to retroactively change it. For the species name, while Marsh did not specifically explain his choice of Dispar, it is believed this name stems from Latin to mean different or unlike, further highlighting Marsh's observation that this vertebral column is the most unusual he had seen before. The classification of Camptosaurus is probably the most fascinating point to analyze about the creature. It is believed to be an early member, and by some reports, one of the most basal members of the Ankyloplexia. This clade is probably unfamiliar to many, but it might be one of the most significant and successful group of dinosaurs to ever roam the Earth. Aside from a few individual genus, like the previously mentioned Euteodon and Cumnoria, again, both of these have different levels of acceptance, this clade contained the Iguanodontidae, a grouping of large herbivorous dinosaurs containing their namesake, the Iguanodon. A 30-foot or 10-meter long behemoth equipped with a powerful beak for processing astounding amounts of vegetation, as well as maintaining pop culture fame with its inclusion in movies like 2000's Dinosaur, as the main character, Alibor. I mean, Aladar. Silly me, what a harmless and non-malice-filled slip-up. The Guanodontidae would set the stage for their more famous and well-known descendants, those of course being the Hadrosaurs, containing some of the most ornate and distinct dinosaurs of all time. While some, like the Parasaurolophus, would stand out with their ornate head crests, used for display and producing unique sounds in communication, Others, like the motherly Myasaura, would keep it a bit more humble, yet still wield that duck-like bill for processing vegetation in mass quantities. While they may seem somewhat subdued and almost defenseless in appearance, the Hadrosaurs were likely one of, if not the most widespread and successful family of dinosaurs to ever roam the Earth, with fossils recovered on every continent except Australia. And by looking at the content today, this may have actually been a personal choice. And including hundreds of unique species, all varying wildly in shape and size. Relating back to Camptosaurus, it is believed this leaf muncher was an important step in transitioning from the small, mostly bipedal ornithischians of the early Jurassic, similar in appearance to more derived members like the small Dryosaurus, to the larger and more powerful grazers of the late Jurassic, including members like the Iguanodon. In fact, many claim Camptosaurus to be the first heavily built ornithopod, with estimates placing the creature at approximately 16 to 20 feet, or around 5 to 6 meters in length, and standing just about 6 and a half feet, or around 2 meters tall. At this size, it likely weighed just about one ton, or around a thousand kilograms in weight. Compare this to something like, say, the early Jurassic Heterodontosaurus, another ornithopod, but one of a much lesser size, only measuring about three to six feet, or about one to two meters in length, and at most only weighing about 20 pounds, or barely 10 kilograms. The head of Camptosaurus has been described as fairly triangular in overall shape, ending in a wide beak at the end of their mouths. This mouth, while not as efficient for collecting vegetation as the later duck-billed hadrosaurs, was still useful in tearing and crushing the tough vegetation they were believed to have favored. Further aiding in this processing would be their two rows of replaceable, flattened teeth. By some accounts, Camptosaurus is believed to be the earliest known ornithopod to sport this replaceable system of grinding teeth, a key evolutionary step for hadrosaurs to make them such efficient eaters. While Camptosaurus was not as complex as the battery column style of later hadrosaurs, this was a step up from the single row of simple teeth many early ornithopods would sport, forcing them to rely on soft vegetation or fruit. Another sign of its transition to the bulky hadrosaurs of the Cretaceous was its limbs. The hind limbs of Camptosaurus were especially robust and well-built, 
necessary to support its growing weight. But in the case of posture, this may actually lean more towards its ancestral roots. Hadrosaurs are what is called a faculative bipedal, meaning much of their movement is done on all fours. In the case for hadrosaurs, to have all four limbs to support their excessive weight, but are capable of rearing onto their hind limbs if needed, often to reach greater speeds when running from predators. While Camptosaurus was believed to not necessarily be a full bipedal creature, it is what is called an obligate biped, meaning much of their time was spent in a bipedal stance, but they would move into a quadrupedal stance if needed, likely when grazing or at rest. Constructions of the wrist for Camptosaurus show they were likely not as well adapted for walking on all fours at all times. Yet, their forelimbs did show some evidence of weight-bearing adaptations, indicating the creature was transitioning to this lifestyle, at least to some extent. For the most part, the rest of Camptosaurus was very similar to that of other large Ankylopelexia, such as Iguanodon, with a robust body, long bulky tail, and lacking any interesting character development of any kind. I mean, what who said that? Not me. Camptosaurus would have lived during the late Jurassic period, with estimates placing it to have likely lived sometime around 150 million years ago. With so many differing species of varying reliability, determining an exact geological range can be difficult. Assuming we only consider the type species, it would have lived in areas of the American West, namely the state of Wyoming. During this time, the American West would be not too dissimilar to how we recognize it today. Characterized by a warm environment, consisting of lush river and floodplains, and dry barren deserts covering the landscape, with some amount of seasonal savanna-like conditions, consisting of more open plains and less diversity in plant life. Based on its location and timing, it is believed to have lived alongside some of the most iconic and eye-catching dinosaurs in our Earth's history. Some of these include the back-plated Stegosaurus, sporting a large lumbering body, and that iconic spiked Thagomizer at the end of its tail, as well as mighty sauropods including the Apatosaurus, browsing the treetops for the freshest vegetation far out of the reach of many smaller, low-browsing herbivores. To hunt such large creatures, carnivores would have to be formidable. Luckily, the Allosaurus was more than up to the challenge. Measuring nearly 28 feet, or 8.5 meters in length, it was a ferocious predator, and still remains one of the most revered hunters to ever prowl the Jurassic wilds. Little is known about the social behavior for the Camptosaurus, but it's believed they would have banded together to form herds in protection. While they could likely outsize many smaller carnivores, it is likely they would have had to rely on speed to outrun larger carnivores like the Allosaurus. But with estimates placing the speed of Camptosaurus at around 15 miles or 25 kilometers per hour, outracing their competition was not a guarantee. Camptosaurus was not exactly set up well for pop culture relevance. While Camptosaurus is a fascinating glimpse into dinosaur evolution, it is unfortunately difficult to get this point across and hype it up in something like a Jurassic Park film. It will always be overshadowed by something with bigger teeth or a longer legacy. But this has not stopped it from appearing in a few more niche appearances. Some of these include documentaries like 2011's Planet Dinosaur, animated series like 2009's Dinosaur Train, video games like 2020's Path of Titans, and of course as the iconic character Iggy in 1989's Dink the Little Dinosaur, which I am 80% sure is just the store brand equivalent of Land Before Time. Okay, 90% sure. Camptosaurus by itself may seem like your standard grass-eating dinosaur, but in reality, the adaptations it was developing were helping to create some of the most successful and widespread creatures to ever roam our Earth. While it may be easy to overlook it in favor of their later descendants, 
Understanding where these hadrosaurs came from can help us better understand how they lived and how they became the dominating force, surviving until the end of all dinosaurs. Everyone loves their Parasaurolophus, Corythosaurus, and Montosaurus, and yes, even Iguanodon, but you can't have any of them without this foundational ornithopod. That's good to do for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Camptosaurus, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. I'm sure the views on this video will reflect what I said here at the end, but we can't be doing the big boys every week. We gotta give the little guys a bit of attention too. Speaking of big boys, next week we return to a true Dino Basics alumni as we once again explore the basics for an updated look on the crested allosaur rival, Ceratosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.